right, Jack, you're looking at Jacobs Field. That's the epicenter of sports in Cleveland tomorrow. But tonight, a little closer on the lakefront, Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. The Browns and the Bills, the Monday night game. We'll talk all about the NFL in the next 44 minutes. Hello, folks. Welcome to this truncated Prime Monday with the aces of our staff, <laughs> Sterling Sharp and Joe Theismann, and, of course, Chris Mortensen and Ron Jaworski. They close out our starting rotation. They will join us throughout the show. Week 5 of the NFL season ends tonight in Cleveland, and though separated by 190 miles of Lake Erie shores, Cleveland and Buffalo have gone nearly five years without meeting. It changes tonight in Cleveland, where Indian fever takes over tomorrow, but tonight... It's still a Brownstown, and Mark Malone's at the Dog Pound. Mark. Well, thanks, Mike. I should say the city is truly euphoric right now over their sports teams. Of course, the Indians, after winning 100 games, will start their playoff series tomorrow. Cleveland owns the next three nights of primetime sports. Tonight, on Monday Night Football, the Cleveland Browns 3-1 atop the AFC Central. They've been doing it with some unspectacular numbers. They rank only 22nd overall in both offense and defense. The difference has clearly been quarterback Vinny Testaverde, who, by the way, is playing in his first Monday Night contest test in a nine-year career. Last year, he was asked simply not to lose football games. This year, he is winning football games. A 59% completion average, eight touchdowns, and one interception has him ranked fourth overall amongst quarterbacks in the National Football League. Yeah, I think Vinny's playing within himself. Uh, he's not making many mistakes, and you know, he'd rather throw the ball away than try to go downfield uh, late and make a bad play for him. So uh, he's playing within himself, not making mistakes. You know, if it's not there, he's going to round bounds or throw it away, and they're going to punt and play defense, and you know, it's working out for him so far. Tonight's contest will provide Cleveland with its stiffest test. Last week, they handled Kansas City's pass rush, including Derek Thomas and Neil Smith. Tonight, however, they face a revamped defense that ranks fourth in the league versus the pass and has recorded 10 sacks. You got Bruce Smith, Cornelius Bennett, uh, Bryce Pop. Uh, you know, those guys have a lot of experience and they know how to get to the quarterback and they're very quick. So uh, I think last week was a good test for our offensive line, but I think this week will even be a bigger test. For the first time since his rookie year in 1985, Bruce Smith hasn't recorded a sack, but don't expect Bill Belichick to double team him exclusively. I don't think he can put too many people on one guy because they got Jeff Coat, Hanson, Bryce Pop, Cornelius Bennett. You know, they got a pretty good number of rushers, and I think you got to be careful about putting everybody on one guy. The other people will kill you. I'll tell you what, the field might be killing the Buffalo front four. Jim Jeffco's defensive end was out here. We're looking at the field. He says it's not in good condition. It's kind of slick out here. Also, guys, a couple of points to look out for. Jim Kelly completing only 42% of his passes so far this year. Look for them to run a lot more no huddle in this contest. Cleveland had seemed to have some problems against Tampa Bay earlier in the year as Tampa hung around in that game. And the Bills also will get back special teams player extraordinaire Steve Tasker tonight. He has not played all season after suffering a hamstring pull just before the opener. We'll have more for you a little later. Mike, let's go back to the studio. All right, Mark, thank you. They're getting fired up in Cleveland. Joe, boil down tonight's game for me. It's real simple, Mike. This is not a game where you're going to see a lot of tricky formations, not a lot of changing. This game is boiling down to two offenses that are very simplistic. Buffalo Bill will be in the K-gun. The Cleveland Browns will be in there one back, three wides, one tight end. Jaws, it's going to be real simple. It's going to be mano and mano. You make a play, you win. You don't make a play, you don't win. Well, Joe, one of the real key mano a mano matches is going to be Andre Rise against the Bills corners of Smith and Burris. And it'll be interesting to see how they play him because in my study of Andre Risen, one thing I noticed, he was having a difficult time getting off the jam and the bump and run. And it wasn't double coverage. It was single coverage. And here's a guy that's one of the premier receivers only catching nine balls. In the first three games, he only caught five. So what Steve Crosby did is he put him in motion so they couldn't get the jam on him. Then he started using him in the slot. This confused the defense of where he's going to be. So I think tonight you'll see Andre Risen in motion and in the slot. Sterling? I look for Andre Andre Reid to do the same thing, Jaws. They got to get him going. They got to get not only him going, try to get Thurman Thomas going, but throwing the ball down the football field, Andre Reid is the guy. And what you got to do, they got a lot of confidence in the K gun offense. So, Mike, let's run it and get Andre the ball. So, we have Andre Reid, Andre Risen as both keys appropriate on this night of champagne and celebration. Here on ESPN, the baseball. Andre is the story. Beautiful. Thank you. 1992 was the only season Troy Aikman did not miss a game with injury. We likely will include 1995 in that list of years. Aikman's pulled calf muscle may have him out two to three weeks. Most likely he will not play when Dallas hosts Green Bay this week. They travel to San Diego next week. Here's what Aikman said happened on the play yesterday in Washington. 
I dropped back and, and planted and then felt as though I'd been kicked in the leg and, and nothing out of the ordinary as far as the drop. Didn't feel anything indifferent to what I normally go through and, and the calf went out. We got to go back. We got to regroup. Uh, now I'm glad uh, we needed that, well, I guess we needed that out of the way so it won't be no uh, fantasy land around here no more. Now we can get back to just downright hard-nosed football. We can get rid of all this undefeated shit. And, uh, how great we are, you know, we, everybody get to smelling themselves and thinking they superstars and, and ain't nothing happened. I mean, you went out there yesterday and two steps from the outhouse. <laughs> more on that undefeated dream derailed in a moment. Let's go back to Mort. I guess Mort, since the game was in Washington, the injury to Aikman, a, he heard it on Thursday. It's appropriate to ask the question, what did the Cowboys know and when did they know it? Well, Mike, I think if he had heard it seriously on Thursday, we'd have another issue. Remember last year when he, uh, the Cowboys didn't report a thumb injury on Aikman before the 49ers game, it became an issue with the league. In this instance, Troy Aikman felt a twinge in Thursday's practice. He actually ran two or three miles after that practice and practice on Friday, so the league has no concerns about whether the Cowboys should have reported this or not, but it certainly was a warning signal to Troy Aikman that something was wrong, and that's why he went down. All right, more Joe, no Aikman for two games, maybe. What kind of an impact will that have on Dallas? I don't think it's going to have a big impact on him, Mike, simply because the Dallas Cowboys are well-equipped to deal with other quarterbacks coming in. I'll show you a graphic since 1991, and you take a look at it. Troy Aikman is 45-16, and 16, but reserve quarterbacks are 7-1. and one. That's Burline at 4-0, and oh, Kozar at 1-1, one and one, Jason Garrett at 1-0, and, oh, and Rodney Pete 1-0. and oh. Both Garrett and Pete last year, Sterling wound up winning ballgames. I think that this football team's going to be okay for at least a little while. Well, without Alvin Harper and Green Bay, without Terrell Buckley, Joe, I have to disagree because this game is the one Mike Holmgren has talked about for the past two years for the Green Bay Packers getting over that hump. And they're playing excellent defense. They're, got a, they're spreading the ball around. Brett Favre on a two-touchdown bench here and lately. I think they're going to be the deal with. And, and without those two key players on both teams, this could get real interesting on a team that I picked to go undefeated. People are going to point to Aikman. Let's remember, he doesn't play defense. The defense gave up 27 points to Washington. We'll see what happens next week. Then there's Steve Young, the Cal Ripken of quarterbacks with 54 straight starts. Young had an MRI on his throwing shoulder today. While we may not know the specific results until later tonight or tomorrow, we do know there are no plans for Young to throw this bye week. Niners are off. Young says his shoulder's been sore, affecting his accuracy. He thinks it was injured during the 31-point win over Atlanta a couple of weeks ago on this play when he was knocked out of bounds. The 49ers play again at Indy in 13 days. Will Drew Bledsoe play in New England against Denver next week? Bledsoe did work out three days last week despite his shoulder separation. Bill Parcells, no definitive word on that today. There's much more ahead on NFL Prime Monday. Later backstage, Leslie Visser touring the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Andre Bad Moon Rising. And an update on more big names injured, including Jerry Rice, who was rock up by the Giants yesterday and Dan Marino coming off his fourth best passing yardage day we'll talk about the Dolphins imagine an automobile engineered to such precise tolerances it feels as if it were formed from a single piece of steel introducing the all-new 1996 Mercury Sable Mercury Sable. Imagine something better. Imagine yourself in a Mercury. Jerry, we're about to meet Freddy Fast Feet. Oh, there he is. Yeah, you do, man. Hey guys, what's in the bag? McDonald's juicy quarter pounder with cheese. Two for two bucks, Mr. Half Size Halfback. Hey, I'll trade your autograph for them. Boy, Mr. Rushmeister. I'll trade your autograph football. Ah, uh, it's not gonna happen here, Rocket Toast. Season tickets. Got, Got him. Skybox? <laughs> Now you can convert two bucks into two hot, tempting quarter pounders with cheese or two morning fresh sausage McMuffins with egg. But the clock's ticking, so hurry. And this just in. Superstar running back Barry Sanders is involved in some kind of major trade. Have you had your break today? You know, we're really excited to be opening the season in Colorado. And although it's a new sport in Denver, most of our fans are pretty knowledgeable. Was that, was that a triple lux? Of course, some are still learning. Guys, stop telling me to hit on the park! In Detroit, they throw octopus on the ice. Here, they're still experimenting. Hey, is that a T-ball? I think it's a porterhouse. It's a learning process. Zam! Zam! Boom! E! 
we're usually on at 7.30 every week. We got a second half only game here after a scoreless first half. But we're going to get you ready for the Bills and Browns nonetheless. Jim Kelly, 18th on the NFL all-time list in passing yardage, getting ready for the game. The members of the great 72 Dolphin team will pop open champagne bottles in celebration when the 95 Dolphins lose their first game. It's a tradition. The last unbeaten team members, the 72 Dolphins, they ice a champagne bottle at the start of each season, and they open it when the last unbeaten goes down. Well, with yesterday's three-point win over Son David, Don Shula's team is the last unbeaten. It'll be odd to see Miami celebrating a Miami loss. But let's go back to the Miami win. Joe, what can we take from that Dolphin victory in Cincy yesterday? I think, Mike, what you can take is you can take the fact that this offense is continuing to grow and evolve. For example, in yesterday's game against Cincinnati, Eric Green, who had seven catches coming into this game, had seven alone in this one for 91 yards and a touchdown. What we're starting to see now is Marino is not just getting the ball to the wide receivers, Ronnie. He is now starting to find that he has a tight end. And, Jaws, I think this offense is just going to continue to get better and better and better. Joe, I agree with you because they have a quarterback that really sets them apart from the rest of the teams in the AFC right now. And Dan Marino, with the game on the line, wants the ball in his hands. As you see right here, here's the game winner. Just a minute, about a minute left. They're down by four. Oh, baby, Dan, this is what he lives for, to make the play right there. You see David not real happy. David spent a lot of time coaching Dan just how to do those things but I tell you when you look at the Miami Dolphins how they're built solid defense good running attack but with Dan Marino they can win in a shootout Mike Dolphins host Indy next week. Now, Sterling, the other side of this game, Carl Pickens, three more touchdowns, now seven on the season. By the way, the record is 22 in the season. Why is Pickens having this great early success? Well, for the one thing, he makes all us old receivers feel young again. But I think <laughs> the man. main reason why he, old man. he's one of the best is because he knows his quarterback is going to give him an opportunity to make plays. The guy goes out and plays hard every week, week in and week out. He knows he's the guy that's going to make those plays. Everywhere he goes in the NFL, regardless of who they play, He's going to get everybody's best offensive player, I mean, best defensive player, best defensive scheme, and most importantly, he wants to be a great player. When Jeff Blake puts it up, Pickens and Scott are making good things job. happen, whether it's penalties or catches. Back to New England, we told you Drew Bledsoe's status is still up in the air for next week. Bill Parcells did make it clear that changes need to be made with his Pats 1 and 3. He didn't specify the changes today, but yesterday he did show his displeasure. Watch. We're just not a very good team, and uh, quite frankly, I don't know whether we will be or not, but it's apparent that we're not, and uh, we'll just have to go back to work or we're going to be in a hole that we can't get out of pretty soon, not long from now. Joe, these problems go way beyond missing Drew Bledsoe, don't they? Yeah, they really do. As a matter of fact, you can go back to the first game of the season when our Tom Jackson of game day had a chance <laughs> to visit with uh, Bill Parcells, and Bill asked, Bill told Tommy about the, his defense and he simply said our defense is slow and friendly well that's one part of their problems the other thing is when you look at the graphic of the amount of offense that they've put up for example rushing attempts only 103 in four games passing attempts 204 25 versus 51 a game there isn't a team in the National Football League that has ever won consistently throwing the football as much as the New England Patriots have and when you have to throw the ball that much Michael your all, your defense just doesn't get a chance to rest and and that's going to be Bill's problem one once he finds a running game, his team's going to get better. They wanted to lower the pass attempts. That's seven or eight more a game. That's Absolutely. not a good sign. Patriots have lost to the Falcons. The Niners the prior week. 49ers were beaten up yesterday against the Giants. We told you Steve Young's rotator cuff is sore, but okay. The Niners were nicked up all over the place. Receiver Nate Singleton fractured his clavicle. He could be out as many as eight weeks. Jerry Rice took a few shots, including a bruised shoulder and a concussion. They think he's going to be okay with the week off. Despite the banging, Rice did catch career touchdown 100 46. Nobody has more. That's overall touchdowns, not just touchdown catches. Nobody has more. Also in this game, sometime before this fumble, Rodney Hampton broke his thumb. Giants are deciding if they're going to put a pin in it or a cast. His status to be determined later in the week. Other injuries, the Chargers' junior Seau expected to play next week despite a strained hamstring. Back up to the top and Trent Dilfer, mild concussion, should play Sunday. Buck safety Thomas Everett, sprained left knee, could miss three to four weeks.
and injured Steeler quarterback Neil O'Donnell will practice Wednesday. Could, Wednesday could start Sunday at Jacksonville. O'Donnell's missed four starts with the thumb injury. Steelers two and two in that stretch. Is Barry Switzer the right man to coach the Cowboys? We'll raise that topic with our roundtable ahead. Next, also the playbook. The Buffalo Bills, their K-gun offense. Is that the right offense to be in for Jim Kelly and company? We'll look at that and talk more Browns Bills, which kicks off in about a half hour. Stay right with us. It's just like a dream you can hold in your hands. Tore stole your heart once. It'll steal it again. Ford introduces the all-new Taurus. It's a dream within reach, and it's you at your best. Taurus, making the dream come true for you. One engine was filled with Castrol Syntec, a full synthetic oil, the rest with conventional oils. They were then drained and started without oil to prove a point. You see, Syntec has a unique molecular structure that bonds to engine parts. Lab tests show it leaves a layer of protection far stronger than conventional oil. And if Syntec protects this well now, imagine if you leave it in. Castrol Syntec protects in ways other oils can't. Now, get 360 cash back when you buy a case of Castrol GTX or Syntec. How do you know? Who do you trust? What are they really saying? Only one long-distance company gives you written proof that your business saves over AT&T. There's no question about savings with MCI's Proof Positive. Sure, my business is saving with AT&T. At least I think so. I feel like we are. They tell us we are. How would we know if we weren't? I don't think we'd know. I don't know if we're saving. There's no question about savings with MCI's Proof Positive. ESPN Net Sports Zone, the touchdown on the internet. Total NFL coverage, 24 hours a day. A blitz of information you can't find anywhere else. ESPN Net Sports Zone, the number one football site on the internet. Fourth and two, that's why I wasted the timeout in a kicking situation. You never do that, but I got a coach that says, well, it's this much, we're going for it. But you know what it was? It's two yards instead of that much. We couldn't see it because the marker's on the other side of the field. We couldn't tell where it is. We couldn't get out of the coaching box. I would get another penalty. That wasn't our day. It wasn't our days. It wasn't just one of those days. I got to thinking that in the first quarter. We throw, we throw, they bust their coverage, and we hit Michael in the end zone for a touchdown with tie the ball game, and our left tackle's in motion. And they bust their coverage. Cowboy consternation in the nation's capital yesterday. Let's talk a little bit about that. Will Dallas win a championship with Barry Switzer in command? To talk a little bit about that, our Knights of the Roundtable, Skip Bayless from the Dallas Insider, Mitch Album from the Detroit Free Press, Mike Wilbon from the Washington Post. You guys were at the game, so I want to get your feelings, especially with Switzer. It's one loss, but the way he pointed fingers after the loss, how did that sit with you? It's what he always does. I mean, the Cowboys don't lose very often, but I think I've been at all the losses they've had the past couple of years with Switzer as head coach. And he's always yelling, screaming at a press conference, blaming somebody else. Yesterday, he hung Ernie Zampezi out to dry. Not only did he blame the assistants for him not knowing how far it was, as if he's not in the game, if he's not on the sideline, but he sort of blames Zampezi when he should have said to Ernie earlier, get Emmitt Smith the ball. We don't have to throw the ball right. this much early in the game. Now, Barry Switzer didn't handle himself with a lot of class, but you understand, he's been a delegator from the day he walked in the door. He lets the guru, Ernie Zampezi, call every play from the press box. I'm tired of that. I want him to assert himself more on the sidelines. I wish he'd overruled Zampezi on second and third and goal from the five-yard line. They should have hammered him in there both those right. times. I'm glad that Barry Switzer stepped up on the sidelines for the first time yesterday and got in Emmett Smith's face. That was Barry Switzer becoming a leader of this football team that you guys don't think he can be. Well, you know, the, the, the constant comparisons to uh, Jimmy Johnson and, and uh, now the way Switzer coaches. I don't think Emmett would have pulled this kind of thing with Jimmy Johnson. I don't think he ever would have said, I'm going to coach this team. The fact is with the Cowboys, there are only a handful of moments each year that the coach is going to be center stage and is going to have to really lead the way because they're so good. They're going to be ahead in most of their games. And in those moments, he is not Jimmy Johnson or hasn't been up till now. Johnson said, this team is in my image and I'm going to coach with attitude. I'm going to throw out the book. And he, I, I honestly yeah, believe Johnson would have gone for a touchdown in that 
took over wait. this team when they were all raw rookies. This was Jimmy's team. Barry Switzer took over an impossible task a year ago, and you guys are asking him to do things where, where he was just saying, this is a veteran football team with a veteran coaching staff. I'm going to let them do what they're mature enough to do at, at this some point. point. And he only had a couple of occasions last year. I'm thinking of both San Francisco games. A coach at some point, as Gibbs did, as Walsh did, as Parcells did, has to stand up and make a difference when it's critical. And, and, and as Mitch said, it's not going to happen every week. And Barry Switzer failed to do that in the only two times it mattered last right. year. And, and we'll so see about this. You're down year. in that goal no. line situation. I know the book says you go for that field goal. But if the I'm coaching the Dallas says. Cowboys, I say, I'm the Cowboys. Hey. You have to be scared of my team. We're going for a touchdown here. We don't make it. No. We're going to stuff it down your throat. Where that the game was lost was before the game. They were DOA at RFK. They weren't motivated. And that's what Switzer's strength is supposed to be. Barry said it's his team this year. Right. We will find out. Now some uh, adversity to deal with. Gentlemen, thank you. Coming up as we continue the playbook, Jim Kelly wants to keep it no huddle. We'll show you why that offense works best for these bills. Also ahead backstage with Andre Risen responding to last week's backstage. I asked Martin Hanks last week, are you the best safety, the best free safety in the NFL? And he said, absolutely. I mean, do you? What, Martin? Is Martin that Hanks? See, I see you can play for San Francisco and you can talk trash. <laughs> and they don't say that. They laugh about it. Like, but if, if Andre Risen talk trash, oh, he's a bad kid. He's a bad guy. He's, he's a criminal. Nice pants. Dockers, flat front khakis. To keep tabs on your engine, look here. To keep tabs on your budget, look here. You always save money at Walmart. Save every day on Pennzoil Performax Synthetic Motor Oil. It flows in the cold and keeps cool in the heat. So it protects to the max. And that keeps things right where they should be. And because we're always working at Walmart to save you money, you'll find our prices are right where they should be. Always low prices, always Walmart. We've invested billions to help businesses grow and provided billions more to improve homes and finance educations. We developed special insurance to pay for nursing home care and low-cost life insurance for people over 50. Because at Transamerica, we sell life insurance, but our real business is improving your life. Transamerica, life insurance, leasing, commercial, and consumer loans. Here's another clever idea from Plymouth. To make the new Plymouth Grand Voyager even more versatile, they simply went back to the drawing board. And voila, a driver's side sliding door was born. Now it's twice as easy to get into. Twice as easy to get out of. Twice as easy to load. Twice as easy to unload. Grand Voyager. It simply slides, folds, protects, unfolds, rolls, and drives better. lost the Super Bowl. Uh, I have thrown four interceptions in a game. I have played bad games at times, but I have never felt so utterly embarrassed and disappointed in my entire football career. <laughs> Jets lost by 37. They didn't look like they belonged on the same field with the Raiders, to be quite frank. The Jets play the Bills next week. You know, in the preseason, the plan in Buffalo was to use more two-back and tight end in the offense for a couple of reasons. Make it tougher on preparing defenses and better protect Jim Kelly. Well, after six quarters and a series of stumbling around, the Bills offense went back to more three-receiver, no huddle, and is again resembling the production of the Bills offense of old. Which offense fits the Bills best? Ron looks at that in the playbook. Josh? Mike, you are correct. They did struggle those first couple games, and Jim Kelly was one of the reasons they struggled. So he went in and talked to the coaches and pressed them to play to his strengths, the no-huddle offense. The Bills have gone back to the no-huddle, attack-style offense, where they spread the field with three wide receivers. This clearly puts the burden on Jim Kelly to be consistent and mistake-free for four quarters every week. Here, the strong side is the left, where the tight end Lonnie Johnson is positioned. 
and Andre Reed is split on that side. In this formation, with two receivers on the other side, the strong side wideout is the toughest receiver to double. So the Bills are playing the high percentage that Reed will be matched in man coverage on the outside. And Reed is the guy that you want to have single coverage. As you'll see, this is exactly what the Bills get. Single coverage on their best receiver. This was game plan. Solid offensive design by Buffalo to give Reed and Kelly the best chance for success. Watch Reed. At the end of his route, he will push the corner Ray Buchanan to get Buchanan's shoulders turned. You can see that right here. And this is especially important on a deep sideline route like Reed is running here because the ball will be in the air for such a long time. And look at Reed come back to the ball. Outstanding execution. These are tough throws to make week in and week out. But I believe that this attack style offense with Jim Kelly wearing the hat is the best way for the Bills to go right now. It gives them their strongest percentage shot to be consistent offensively. I thought last year Jim Kelly had one of his better years, although the Bills record was not indicative of that. But he really took a pounding. And I was very concerned coming back into the season how Jim would recover from that pounding that he took. But in my study of watching him throw the football, he was throwing with great velocity, throwing the deep out, which is the toughest throw in football. And Joe, he looks very comfortable in the no huddle offense. Well, Ronnie, he does look comfortable, and nobody runs it any better than he does, except he's got a problem. He's run it for over six years now. People have seen it. He doesn't have the speed and talent that he had when James Lofton was there or Don Beebe was there. He has Andre Reed and Thurman Thomas left. That's it. And I think that you give coaches a long enough time to look at this offense just like Belichick did in the Super Bowl, you wind up not being able to make plays. And Sterling, Jim has reached a point where this offense is only going to be as good as he and Andre and Thurman are. And that's it. And that's the key. If you got Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, and Andre Reed, you let them do all the work. And that's what going back to the K-Gun is going to do. It's going to force these guys who want all this, they want to carry this team, they're going to get their opportunity for the rest of the season. And that's what you can ask from a football team whose defense is playing pretty good and whose offense needs to pick it up just a little bit and, and, and Mark being at the game I guess you got your thoughts on what they also need to do to be successful. Well, Sterling, I think another thing you have to look at is the fact that quarterback Jim Kelly has been depleted of wide receivers. With the exception of Andre Reid, he really doesn't have anybody to throw to. Johnson, the tight end, can catch the football, but he's not a great blocker. They have not run the ball well out of the two-back offense. Thurman Thomas, only 2.8 yards a carry. In the K-gun, he can spread it out and, and be much more effective throwing the ball to Thurman Thomas. I think that makes him a much more dangerous offense. Mike? Look for number 44 for Buffalo, Derek Holmes. He may be in the backfield with Thurman Thomas. As a decoy and as a weapon, he's a good back. Coming up, Chris Mortensen. More news, including some on Barry Foster. Speaking of running backs, is there a landing place for this two-time pro bowler? Mort's coming up. Don't go away. <laughs> it's because we offer our business class passengers complimentary limousines, sleeper seats with up to 15 inches of extra leg room, and personal video screens at every seat. Or it may just be our refreshingly different British personality. Whatever the reason, it seems we put a few noses just a bit out of joint. Upper Class by Virgin Atlantic Airways. Good, Miss Brown. Mm. Tasty, Miss Rogers. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Handmade, Miss Mooney? Of course. Creamy with a little crunch and all rich ice cream. New Carvel Blue Ribbon Cakes. Sinfully chocolate fudge with Nestle chocolate and butter crunch with Nestle Butterfinger candy. Did you get this at the Carvel Ice Cream Bakery, Miss Mooney? Yes, sir. Well, put this in the Carvel freezer. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Everything should be made of ice cream. College game day here. Tonight we're in Lester's dorm room to give our viewers more insight into the life of a college football player. You had quite a day, Lester. Up at six for weights, classes till two, three hours of practice. You must be pushed, huh? Plus, you got a big game Thursday night on ESPN. That's got to make it a lot tougher for you to fall asleep, huh? Is this linen? Wow, guys, check this out. Ooh. 
Ooh, soft to the touch, too. Mm -hmm. His center, Steve Everett, says he has been the biggest story of the Browns this year. Vinny Testaverde commanding in the huddle. AFC's third-rated passer getting ready for the Bills in about 15 minutes. Bring Chris Mortensen back in. Jim McMahon there in the preseason. Mort, we thought he was going to be here at some point during the regular season. What's going on with Jim McMahon? Mike, he's still in Cleveland. He's got his kids in school. They're waiting for somebody to get hurt. And if Craig Powell, their first-round pick, needs surgery, they will sign Jim McMahon. They're just waiting for a spot to open up on the roster. Powell hurt his knee in last week's Cleveland game against Kansas City. Right. What's going on with a couple of big names? Let's start with Barry Foster and Johnny Johnson, the running backs still waiting for a call or at least a decision on their part to find a home. Well, Barry Foster will be in Cincinnati tomorrow, Mike, to take a physical. We don't know if they're going to negotiate at that time. He's looking for about $750,000 plus incentives. Uh, he turned down a deal from the Houston Oilers. Now, Johnny Johnson, uh, he was disappointed. Johnson was, as was Foster, not getting a deal done with the Oilers. I tell you what, he doesn't need the money. He's going to get a $700,000 uh, deferred signing bonus check in December after making $2.6 million with the uh, Jets last year, Mike. Hmm. So a couple other names that are out there, Mort, still Keith Jackson. We thought something may have happened with him during Green Bay's bye week. And Patrick Bates, the Raiders defensive back who just skipped camp at the end of the preseason. What's going on with those two guys? As far as Jackson goes, you, I think the Packers coaches see an urgency here. They see some cracks now in the 49ers and Cowboys. They'd like to get him in. And Keith Jackson, from what I understand, is in playing condition and could even play Sunday against the Cowboys. So maybe tomorrow some activity there. There hasn't been any activity since last Wednesday. As far as Patrick Bates goes, he's told the Raiders he isn't coming back. He wants to be traded by the, by the uh, Raiders to the Cowboys. Trade deadline next Tuesday, and he's hoping the Raiders' fast start will kind of let Al Davis make this move without thinking he's getting squeezed here. All right, Mort, thanks. The weather in Atlanta is the same every time we come to you. It's amazing. Thanks, it's Chris. It's beautiful here. <laughs> when we come back backstage at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Andre Risen, his magical musical tour. Saturday Night Fever. The Bee Gees, the Bee Gees was tight. The Bee Gees was tight. Y'all know Bee Gees was tight. Now, come on, give it up. <laughs> places that I've never been, seeing things that I may never see again, and I can't wait to get on the road again. And when you get on the road again, make sure you do it on General's, because General has the right tires for all the roads you ride. Sooner or later, you'll own General's. My brother, my brother, I can't believe. Spend all your dough on weekend leave. Gotta call home, but you ain't got no cash. You gonna eat that corned beef hash? Call 1-800-COLLECT, save them some butts. Use Slick 50 at your next oil change. It treats the vital moving parts of your engine with a super slippery layer of protection for up to 50,000 miles. Slick 50, starting your engine without it is a terrible thing to do. Who is, who is that? Who is, who is it? I don't know. Oh, Bill Pellington. He was indecent, that guy. He broke his arm against the Lions and played five plays with a broken arm. The next year, they fit him with a steel plate on his forearm, and we're watching the movies going around using it like a sledgehammer. <laughs> Boom! And Billy Hop sure, for the Packers. Yeah, sure. He comes in the defensive hole and says to the official, why don't you give the son of a gun and let him do a clean job on it? <laughs> <laughs> What takes business presentations to a whole new level? The Intel Pentium processor. It gives your notebook the power to make PC software come alive. With video and graphics that help your presentations speak for themselves. The Intel Pentium processor. Backstage is brought to you by Intel. Look for the Intel Inside Pentium processor symbol to get the best performance for all your PC software. 
He's fought with Dion, seen his house burned by his girlfriend, averaged 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns in his first six NFL seasons. Andre Risen does nothing quietly. This offseason, he became the highest paid NFL wide receiver, $17 million contract. But with just one touchdown in four games, people are starting to wonder why Risen is not complaining. Leslie Visser asked that and more this week, truly backstage at Cleveland's other big new arrival, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Welcome to Cleveland. A bad moon rising into the end zone. The kids start calling me Bad Moon. They come up to the house, hey, Bad Moon, Bad Moon. Do you know any of these people? The Furious Five, Grandmaster Flash. They started it all. They kicked it off. Oh. Superfly, Curtis Mayfield. Hey, look at them Adidas. Tommy Dog. That's George Clinton. Parliament. <laughs> Funkadelic. That reminds me of myself. Slim Whitman. No, no slim. The BGs was tight. The BGs was tight. Y'all know BGs was tight. Now, come on, give it up. That's home right there. Yeah. That's Aretha Franklin. I mean, you had to grow up listening to Aretha, you know, in your home because uh, your parents, your grandparents, everybody listened to them. You know, the queen of soul. Should TLC be in here? Well, they sold about six, seven million copies, and they're still selling, and, um, yeah, they deserve, they, they definitely deserve a spot. Could she record for 25 years? I think you have to record. 25 years? 25 years. You got to record for 25 years you, to get in here? I believe you do. Baby. Now, they have some that are part of an exhibit. Baby, y'all might not get in here then, baby. <laughs> do you feel like you're a pretty good musician? I'm all right. <laughs> you mean as a singer, a writer, or a, can you play an instrument? I don't sing. I, I rap. You rap. Okay. I rap. It's called flow. What was the role of music in your life growing up? Music was my first love, actually. You know, because really you can express yourself in all kinds of different ways, you know, in music. And it was, a, it was a way to get away. It was a way to think of different situations that you encountered in life. That's um, the receiver that plays on the other side of me, Michael Jackson. Is this Michael there Jackson? There you go, right there. <laughs> so, take, see how that, you see how that was? Why Cleveland? I mean, Cleveland has never been to the Super Bowl. I figured like this. I figured that I didn't want to go to San Francisco, even though I don't have anything against Jerry Rice. Um, I just didn't want to go there. You know, uh, I think that was John's ta John Taylor's spot. You know, that's that's a place like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know, those guys are history. You know, Jerry Rice is the greatest receiver to play this game. Michael Irvin is the same way. So I didn't want to go to Dallas. You know, and uh, Michael's a great player and. I didn't want to go there and then get overshadowed, overlooked, or anything of that nature. I'd rather compete against those guys and try to win my own Super Bowl and start going there and jumping on. So I chose Cleveland, and I figured there's nobody in the NFC probably that can beat Dallas or Frisco at this time because those are the two best teams. And I said, Cleveland has a shot in the AFC, and here I am. A lot of people said that me and Belichick wouldn't get along. Me and Bill's fine. You have to know what everybody said about him before you came here. That... Well, they said that Bill was very tight, hidden, uh, very disciplined, evil. You know, and how is he going to handle a hot-headed, you know, flamboyant Andre Rodgers? That's what the paper said. And I'm not the paper. You know, when we met, he wasn't the Bill Belichick of the paper. He was Bill, you know, and um, I respect him from his, his his coaching standpoint, and he respected me as a player, and we've we've hit it off great. You know, it's interesting. Pep or Rob Burnett said that Belichick needs guys like Ryzen and Pepper Johnson, personality guys, guys who challenge the team on the team to make it a cohesive unit. Uh, are you still surprised that Andre ended up in Cleveland? I, I am, Mike, for the simple fact that they, they weren't the Atlanta Falcons as far as throwing the football and allowing Andre to do what he does best and that's make big plays. $17 million would have changed my mind also. But Andre <laughs> is happy, and that's the one thing he talked about when he and I talked. He said he's very happy. He went to a team that wanted him. He went to a place where he could be himself, and I think that it's really important, Joe, when you, you made big plays before, you got the money, now be happy. And he will make big plays some more, not quite as many as he did in Atlanta because they don't throw the football as much. But you know there's a guy in Cleveland who keeps getting overlooked on the offensive side. We talk about Vinny Testaverde, he deserves the credit. We talk about Michael Jackson, we talk about Andre Risen. I think a guy who is as valuable to the Cleveland Browns as Emmett is to Dallas or Thurman is to Buffalo, that's Leroy Horde. You know, Jaws, here's a guy who can do everything you ask him to do. Block, run, catch. He's one of the most versatile backs in football, but basically unknown completely.
Yeah, that's because the guy that's pulling the trigger there, Joe, was doing one, one heck of a job, and that's Vinny Testaverde. And the one back set has really helped his game. And I'm going to show you a shot here of Vinny going through his reading progression. On the fake, he comes out and rolls to his right. His first look is going to be to Michael Jackson to the post, but the Chiefs go with an inside and out coverage on him right there. The lane is not there to throw the football, so he settles, goes to his second read, Frank Hartley on the cross. Uh, looks like he might have a chance to stick it in there, but he sees the back of Tracy Simeon, chief linebacker, taking away that passing lane. He maintains his poise in the pocket when he feels the pressure and looks to his third receiver. The deep out to Andre Risen, tightly covered by Dale Carter, and I mean throws a bullet in there. And really what you're seeing Vinny Testaverde do is execute the offense with consistency week in and week out, Mike. And you saw some of the options, not just wide receivers in Vinny's progression of looking around. Get a look at this stat on the Browns offense this year compared to last. See where the passes are going. This year, the passes have not gone to the tight end and certainly not the running backs, the wide receivers, and the touchdown pass distribution that has changed. We'll be back to wrap up this edition of Prime Monday as Thurman Thomas and the Buffalo Bills get ready. Thurman Thomas has gone 13 games without a 100-yard game. Longest drought of his career. Career. Will that change tonight? We'll find out. Have some final thoughts. Don't go away. Here's another clever idea from Plymouth. Take the power of an advanced multi-port engine and the nimble agility of power rack and pinion steering, then expand on that idea considerably, and you'd have the new Plymouth Voyager Rally. Half sports car, half trunk. Clever idea. Plymouth Voyager Rally. It simply slides, folds, protects, unfolds, rolls, and drives better. Mama did so much for you. Nine long months. <laughs> and Bane, too. Do the right thing and give her a call. Because without your mama, you wouldn't be at all. Call 1-800-COLLECT. It's easy, baby. Most new car radiators are made of thin, lightweight aluminum under tremendous stress. Protect your car in the Prestone Zone against corrosion and temperature extremes. It's your car. Protect it in the Prestone Zone. The amazing Split Fire Spark Plug won a United States patent. Does it really work? Is it that much better? It's guaranteed. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. You'll feel it work. Guaranteed. A 4.8% gain in mileage. You'll save because it works. Guaranteed. There's nothing like a split fire. You'll get more power and more mileage for your money back. You'll get more here. And you'll spend less here. Guaranteed. Some say he's the best pure runner in the country. Thursday night, you decide. Stephen Davis and Auburn take on Mississippi State at Jordan-Hare Stadium in an SEC West border brawl. Mississippi State versus Auburn. Thursday night at 8, only on ESPN. NFL Prime Monday is brought to you by the all-new Plymouth Grand Voyager, the next generation of minivan. Hmm. We want to remind you to tune over after the game for Sports Center recap of this game. Of course, all the baseball stuff and as we await the OJ verdict tomorrow, baseball tonight comes your way right after that Sports Center. Is that correct? Yes, it is. 12:30 Eastern Time. So all that after the game. Jaws, before we talk more Cleveland Buffalo, one thought on the league from you. Uh, Mike, I look out to Arizona where the Cardinals are one in four, and the general manager out there said that Buddy Ryan, the head coach, is doing a great job. <laughs> of course, the general manager is Buddy Ryan. <laughs> Joe? <laughs> I think in the game tonight, let's just switch gears and go to the game tonight. I think Thurman Thomas has to come up real big as a receiver matched up against those Brownie linebackers. Yeah, I think he's going to catch about 10 or 12 balls, but I look for the physicalness of Bill Belichick's secondary to take over. they got a lot of picks. They're going to pound those Bill receivers. they just got to hang on to the ones that get thrown to them. We don't know about the Bills yet. Tonight's the night we find out if the Buffalo Bills are still there or maybe if they've slipped back a bit. This is a chance for them to get an opportunity to find themselves in the mix here in the rest of the AFC. Keep